Meze? We have a problem. What's cracking, everyone? My name is Ryan, and today we're taking a look at the Meze Lyric 2. Now, this is the second generation of the OG Lyric from Meze Audio. It is a closed back planar magnetic headphone that retails in at $2,000. And before we get further into this, guys, I do want to send a big thank you out to Meze Audio, who sent this out in exchange for all of my thoughts and all of my opinions. All right, so I just want to dive right in and talk about what changed from the Lyric 1 to the Lyric 2 from an aesthetic standpoint. The first thing you're going to notice is this Macassar ebony wood that is on the cups that has changed from that leather that we had on the original Lyric. You're also going to notice the pressure equalization system, aka the holes on the side of the cups, just like they were on the original Lyric are here again as well. But then going around the underneath of the headphone, when you take off the pads, which by the way, these leather pads are super easy to take off. You are gonna notice the letters on the driver, and that is the QWRM letters, and that stands for Quarter Wavelength Resonator Mask. What does that do? Well, straight from their site, it covers select openings in the drive frame to effectively attenuate high frequency peaks above seven kilohertz for a less fatiguing listening experience, AKA, it's supposed to help with the higher frequencies so it's not so stabby and bright in the ears. And again, we'll talk about that when we get into sound. Now, this driver, as with pretty much all high-end Meze headphones, has been engineered in partnership with Renaro Isodynamics. It is an isodynamic hybrid array driver. It is an MZ4 driver. It's 61 ohms of impedance and 100 dB at one kilohertz. So this is supposed to be portable. So it is very easy to drive. You can power this off of something simple like your phone or a laptop. In fact, Meze even states so on their site. I do still recommend a dongle DAP type solution if you are going to take this on the go, but you don't have to. And it is going to be driven fairly easily on that account. Now, I also want to mention inside the box, there is another upgrade you're going to get, and that is the cable. Now, the cable is actually a premium hand braided copper cable that comes to a 4.4 termination. And then you're going to get a pretty basic 3.5 connected cable. But I gotta say, just like the Empyrean 2, these are really nice cables that Meze is including with their headphones. And I was really happy to see that it's a high quality cable. Now, comfort wise, it is very comfortable. Aesthetic wise, I think it's a beautiful headphone, albeit a little bit hard to record on B-roll with these shiny cups here, but no issues with that. The issue that I have with the Lyric 2 is on the fit. Now it fits well, don't get me wrong but it doesn't quite seal all the time on the top of my ears. And the reason for that is the spring system on the cups. The cups have tilt to them, but these automatically want to kind of spring back. And it's very easy to notice right away. In fact, these don't even sit very well on a headphone stand, as you can see, just because of that spring system. Well, when they are resting on your head, that spring will push them downwards into the bottom part of your jaw here and I have felt a little bit of a gap in the seal at the top of my ear. Now, I've rotated the headphone on my head a little bit back in order to create more of a seal, and that does help. But I will say because of that spring system, when I'm moving my head up and down, if I'm you know bobbing my head to the beat, the headphones will move a little bit. These do not exactly clamp like I want to the side of my head, and it's because of the spring, not because of the clamp force. So I do wonder if that was a miss or Maybe it's just my head shape, I'm not sure, but it does affect sound. And I am going to talk about that very shortly, actually, because we're about ready to jump into that section. But first, let me tell you what I paired this headphone up with, just so you guys get an idea. Really quick here, guys, if I can grab your attention, please like the videos and subscribe to the channel as I am trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. I also have a Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel in that way, I would highly appreciate that. Now, my Cayenne RU7 is my portable DAC amp solution, and that actually synergizes really well with the Lyric 2. So a lot of my listening was done with the RU7. After all, it is a portable headphone, so why not use it in that situation? But on my desktop, my favorite pairing on my desktop was my Cayenne IHA6, a solid state amp 
that pairs really well with headphones that have a lot of focus on mid-range such as this one does. So I felt like that was an excellent pairing. Now I did try this on my shit Midgard and even my Cayenne HA3A tube amplifier. And even though those still obviously paired well with sound, I just preferred the IHA6 more. And so that's what we're gonna talk about next as we dive into the sound profile of the Lyric 2. What I can tell you with the sound of the Lyric 2 is it is lacking in bass response, in my opinion. It does not have the fullest bass response, especially for a closed back headphone. It's a little bit lean in that nature. It does have extension there and just doesn't have a lot of slam, doesn't have a lot of rumble, doesn't have a lot of boom to the bass. Now that paves the way for a very full and lush mid-range, however. The mid-range on this headphone is something I can definitely tell they addressed from the original Lyric because I felt like the original Lyric was very hit and miss on the mid-range. And yeah, it is very hit on the Lyric too from that standpoint. It's a full mid-range, it's excellent details of the mid-range, and that paves the way then as it rolls into the treble and you get a very just kind of a sweet treble response. It is definitely detailed and there is definitely some air into that treble and there's times where it can get just a little bit, tad bit spicy, but I wanna break this down further as I always like to do. And I wanna talk about what I really dislike about this headphone and that is the bass response. All right, so I'm gonna bring up a couple of tracks here and the first one is Break by Santana featuring Ali Brooke. Now you might be wondering why I'm talking about this with bass response because this is such a mid-range focused track. It's one I sample all the time for mid-range. Well, it's because at the very beginning there is a bass guitar that is supposed to kind of layer in underneath this track with Ali's beautiful voice, Santana's beautiful guitar as he's playing through and it's just missing. I mean, that's the best way I know how to say it is it just doesn't fill up the bottom end. It's kind of like if somebody served you a dish and it just wasn't quite flavored right or maybe just didn't have enough spices that you need. That's kind of what I feel like is missing with that track and missing with the bass response. Now to even go further into that sub bass, I also want to talk about the track Hey Now by London Grammar. At the 120 mark of this track, and you guys know what I'm talking about if you've heard it, her voice fills up the room like nobody's business. If you have a nice vocal focused headphone, which this one does vocals really well, but that bass does not fill up the room and it should. You should feel that nice full sub bass that kicks in and can get a little bit boomy and just brings you all in and it just doesn't bring me all in when I'm listening to that track, at least with the bass response. But I don't wanna keep beating this sucker up over the bass response. By the way, it doesn't really have slam either in my opinion. But let's talk about that wonderful mid-range that I mentioned at the beginning. I got a fun track recommendation to listen to if you have the Lyric 2 or any headphone really. And that is called That's Why I Play the Blues by Gary Moore. And blues music does really well on this headphone for both the mid-range response and trouble. And I gotta tell you, blues music typically doesn't have, you know, a ton of drums and things. It's all about the guitar. It's all about the voice and the soul of the music. And I really feel it with this headphone. This particular track in general just really fills up the room with the mid-range response. And I gotta say just the resolution and the amount of details and layering that you get in the mid-range is done excellent. And it again, it is something Meze clearly focused on with the Lyric 2. And so if you're listening to blues music, if you're listening to jazz, even classical, I think you're really gonna appreciate what they have accomplished with the Lyric 2. But rock and roll music, no, at least for me. I like to listen to a lot of rock and roll that's got some like fast rhythm and pace and the drums and things. And just drums don't really have a lot of punchiness to them with this headphone. Again, I think some of that is possibly that seal, but I just don't think it has it in general. It doesn't have a lot of attack for a closed back headphone. It's a little bit surprising, but it just doesn't. So. That type of genre of music wasn't really that impressive to me. Of course, metal goes along with that. And of course, electronic music for the most part, if it's got a lot of sub bass, it's gonna be a no-go. All right, and so as we talk about trouble on the high end, I wanna talk about gaming and more specifically the game Divinity Original Sin 2. It's one of my favorite all-time games. And there's actually two reasons for that. One is the game itself is excellent, but the other is the soundtrack. It is one of my favorite soundtracks to listen to, even when I'm not playing the game. 
and the Divinity Original Sin 2 main theme is the soundtrack that I'm going to recommend listening to on this headphone. It is very wide and spacious. It's a giant stage. It has excellent layering. You're going to be able to hear things in the second and third row off and those little bits of details that you get. And I just think this headphone assists very well with orchestral arrangements such as that one. And don't don't turn your nose to it just because it's a gaming soundtrack. This is actually one of the best soundtracks I've heard really in any type of genre just because it is gaming. Highly recommend checking it out because it is so good. And then the other one I want to recommend is actually called Tidescape by Roger Eno. Now I recommended this one. This is actually an ambient type soundtrack and Yoshi Horikawa, I suppose, does some of that as well. But this also pairs really well with this headphone because this headphone is very wide for a closed back. Now, I don't know how much I necessarily hear the height. It's just wide and spacious. And that Phasex system on the driver is definitely something that assists that with the Lyric 2. And something that is kind of a, it's not a parlor trick or anything, but it, it's a lot of fun to listen to. Now, you are going to pick up some sibilance on tracks and artists that have sibilance in their voice but this will not add sibilance. So I would not call this a sibilant headphone. I do think this is better in the treble response than the Empyrean 2. I don't think it has those stabbiness peaks quite as bad as the Empyrean 2 did for my ears at least. So I think they've done a nice job there and there's a lot of air. Now, one thing I will tell you because there is a lot of airiness and spaciousness and things, this isn't the most isolating headphone I've ever listened to as far as a closed back goes. Now, if you're listening to music, it's probably going to assist with that. But if you're in a busy subway station or something, I, I don't know if it's really going to block out a lot of that noise as well, because I do think it just has that open spaciousness and kind of leak sound through the sides of those portholes, equalization system, what have you. All right. Now, I do want to compare this to the Dan Clark E3 because I happen to have it sitting behind me there. I do think that's an interesting one because they come in at the exact same price. All right, and so what I can tell you about the E3 versus the Lyric 2, the E3's got better bass response. It is fuller in the bass, it does have rumble, and it does have boominess to the bass response, but I don't wanna stop there. The mid-range, I gotta say, I would give it to the Lyric 2 because it is a little bit fuller, whereas the E3 is a little more laid back in a sense on the mid-range, but it is still, a nice and detailed and resolute mid-range. And then treble is kind of pick your flavor type thing. Now the E3 can get a little bit brighter, I think, than the Lyric 2. Both of these stage really well for closed back headphones. Both of these don't isolate the best for closed back headphones. And we can say, you know, the holes on the sides probably are a reason for that. This one definitely fits me better. It definitely seals better. This one's probably more comfortable, but overall, I prefer the E3. It's got more punchiness to it. It's got more slam. It's got more tack nature. It's just a more fun headphone for me to wear while also being detailed and have excellent resolution such as the Lyric 2 does. So really it's gonna be kind of a pick your flavor, pick your poison type thing. I just think the E3 is mine. Well, it is mine, I own it, but E3 is my poison that I would pick for the flavor completely lost my train of thought on that. So let's finish this up. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, guys, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because I would greatly appreciate if you'd help me reach my goal of 5,000 by the end of the year. I also have a Patreon and drop a comment down below. I would love to hear what you guys think about the Lyric 2, about the E3 to the Lyric 2. Have you tried it? Let me know. All right, guys, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.